What is up, everybody? Welcome to Sales Stories in Real Life, episode 30. I'm your host, Alex Bruski, and this is the show where professional salespeople share their experiences on times that they were in the buyer seat and they were on the opposite side of a sale. Today, we got a very special guest, Mr. Anthony Natoli. He is an enterprise AE at Lattice, co-founder of Revenue Lab. Anthony, you uh, you had a really, really interesting story that kind of blew me away pre-show, so I'm excited to get into this one. Your mom runs a charcuterie business. She's running the show. You're hearing her doing disco calls. What, why don't you kind of share with us what uh, what she's been up to and what kind of takeaways you've drawn from it? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, happy to be here, excited for it. Um, and I was thinking about you know, a story I wanted to share. Um, and a couple months ago, actually, I know we scheduled this and I, I was home at my parents' house. And, you know, my mom started this charcuterie business and um, she kind of blew up. And I just like never knew what that like handoff was from someone coming to her with like a request and her kind of nailing down what she was actually going to deliver. And so, uh, she gets a call one night. We're in the kitchen, and she like picks up her little notepad with her pen, throws her glasses on. She's in my dad's office um, on speakerphone, and this this uh, client or potential client basically is uh, coming to her with like, "Hey, I've got this party. Um, I'm I'm looking around at uh, some other people to kind of help with, you know, some catering and charcuterie. I heard about you from." a friend and I wanted to get some more information um, and was like kind of very vague on what she was looking for. So my mom um, needed to kind of do some digging about, you know, like what it is she was looking for. So I was super impressed. Uh, my mom basically took a, took a step back and like set expectations for the call. She was like, you know, I really appreciate you, you know, coming to me and sharing that. Um, I, I've worked with a lot of different people that, uh, you know, host these various different events. So for me to really get an understanding if I could help you or not, like, I want to dig into a little bit more about like, the event, who's going to be there? What do people like? Are there any allergies? And so she just went through, like, these list of questions that made it totally about them and made them feel comfortable to really understand, like, what kind of experience did this person want? So she asked, like, okay, so like, what is the event? Where is it? Is it indoors? Is it outdoors? Right. And she got them to completely open up and share. Um, and then obviously, you know, the, the client on the other end was sharing all these things. And my mom did this really interesting uh, uh, tactic, which we always use um, in, in sales is she started telling stories to get the person on the other line to think about different options to grow the order size. Right. Um, because the pricing depends on you know, the types of products that she's delivering to these folks. So if it's going to be like sandwiches and a charcuterie board and maybe her famous meatballs. Right. And so um, she, she told this story about um, a similar customer that came to her and she was like recapping. She's like, okay, so it sounds like you have little kids that are going to be there, but also a mix of adults. Um, you all are big, like Italian food fans, but you also want that mix of charcuterie. So she did a great job of kind of recapping what she heard, but she's like, I also have an idea that I wanted to run by you. And then she shared what, you know, a similar customer like them um, had done with her and basically made suggestions. And uh, the client was like blown, aw blown away and she like got that commitment from them right there. And she turned like a what was like a very vague idea into this like fully complete order based on what that person wanted. And so um, I had some takeaways, right? Like someone comes to you in sales and even if it's an inbound or it could be an outbound, like people have an initial idea and our jobs as sales professionals to get them to think about it in a bigger way and be that like, resource that trusted advisor if you will compared to all the other vendors they'll be looking at and so here my mom uh, separated herself as just another charcuterie business as like this this expert in the space who's like done this hundreds of times um, and really helped the person visualize this this cool experience for them and 
um, really gain that trust in, in those first few minutes by, you know, setting expectations, sharing a customer story. So, um, you know, obviously it's my mom, but it's so interesting to see that like sales happens everywhere, literally everywhere. My mom's never been trained in sales. Um, it was just kind of natural for, for her and in, in, in the conversation that she had. So um, I thought that would be interesting to kind of dive into a little bit. Man, I, I love this from the very get-go. I have a soft spot for folks that sell with no tech because I learned how to sell with a CRM of manila envelopes, right? Like, and right away she's like taking out her notepad, right? And like writing notes, like there's no Salesforce, there's no HubSpots, no like logging notes or, you know, dualies or anything. It's just get out the pen and paper and let's do it the the old fashioned way. So I love that. And I can imagine right away at the beginning, the customer that's calling probably reached out to other vendors, as I'm sure you kind of led on to. And I'm sure everyone else is picking up the phone and doing something along the lines of, all right, what's the guest list, right? What do you want? Here's the pricing, right? And it's just so borderline inhumane and just order taker. And she really dove in there and was asking those questions that are critical for charcuterie, like, is it indoor or outdoor? What kind of food does everybody like to eat? What kind of an event is it? So, I mean, like, what kind of a tonality is she having in these conversations too, right? Because some people might be a little bit turned off, right? If you're asking questions about like, hey, like, what does your family like to eat, right? Like some of these questions could come off improper if you're not asking them properly. Like what are, you know, I guess, what are some of the questions and what are some of the things that you heard her saying that really helped that other person open up? Yeah, so great question. My mom comes off like she's from Brooklyn, New York. So she's very straightforward. But she has like this soft tone about her that just makes you ultimately like feel like you're talking to like, you know, a mom. And it's and it's 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 phenomenal to listen to. Um, one of the things that she does is using using like softening statements. So she would say something like, you know, everyone that comes to me has a different budget in mind. So before I just tell you everything that I offer, like I'm curious, like what's the budget that you were thinking of kind of working with? And then I can share um what other folks have done with that budget and how I've, how I've helped them. And it was just like, wow, like I could definitely learn something from that, you know, before just going in and asking like, what's your budget, you know, using that softening state, a softening statement or, um, you know, recapping uh, after she heard something important, right. If someone says they have little kids, you know, she dug into that a little bit more. So she's like, okay, it sounds like you have little kids. I know, um, a lot of times they could be a little bit more picky. What are you envisioning for them? Right. And like really just like putting it back in their court and and having them basically sell themselves on what they really want. And then my mom used all of that information to kind of just like formulate this, what we would call like a pitch um, and just big, big, hey, I've heard these things. Here's what I'm going to recommend. And then, hey, also I wanted to run this by you because it sounds like um, you know, you also may be interested in this based on, you know, other folks that I've worked with. So I think the biggest takeaways for me were before she just asked like a pointed question or like feature dumped when we're just talking about food or food dumping, if you will, or like menu dumping, she used those softening statements to really understand like what she should be talking about. If this person had a $20 budget. My mom would DQ them. Like I've heard her do that a couple of times where she, the person's like, yeah, I only have $40 to spend. My mom's like, hey, we're, I'm probably not the best fit for you, but I can recommend you to someone else. You know, it's it's so funny because as I'm listening to you, I'm kind of like, you know, sales is kind of like charcuterie, right? Like we always talk <laughs> about like deliver a fully customized solution, right? And like charcuterie, you could go to the supermarket, right? And get some, you know, freaking, you know, cheese and salami, right? In a little plastic wrap for $20, right? Like, or you could go to someone who puts a lot of thought into it, who puts a lot of care into it, who fully customizes everything on that plate. Like, do you care if it looks beautiful, right? Like, do you just want volume? I mean, you can really, really, really customize every little nook and cranny of a charcuterie board. So now you came up with a new term, uh, a, a, charc a trusted charcuterie advisor. Um, that's, uh, <laughs> that, that, that's a new one. We'll have to coin that. But I really love how in depth she goes with the questions because something like charcuterie, you could either go really in depth or you could really stay on the surface. And there's obviously a lot of relation there to sales. And obviously we're going to have a lot of B2B sellers that are listening right now 
and they're obviously looking for some takeaways. What would you say is like the biggest takeaway, right? Like obviously there were a number of things, the softening statements, the question asking, how thorough she was diving in, her her softening tonality. What would you say was kind of the biggest takeaway that folks could like actually take into their jobs, right? And get better at their sales jobs from your mom's charcuterie story. Totally. So I think I think the qualification process was super important because my mom obviously doesn't want to spin her wheels with you know, someone that's just going to be completely out of the price range. I also think one of the things that she'd asked about was like, hey, have you used someone like me before in the past? And asking about what that process was like, like, uh, and the person ended up saying, yeah, we've done it before. Like we used, uh, you know, there's a company called Tuscany, which is like a uh, Italian deli. And the person shared like what went well and what didn't go well. So, you know, for anyone listening, usually when you're talking to prospects, They've used something in the past, whether it be like a manual process or a competitor. So asking them about like the last time they invested in something like this and what went well, what didn't go well. That way my mom knows, number one, like based on what didn't go well, can she actually help with? And what did go well, she could double down with and just say, hey, yeah, I can help you with this. But it sounds like, you know, maybe there was uh, some disorganization with how things were set up. And you're maybe looking for a little bit more hands-on approach because some of these orders are like 750 bucks a pop. And that's a ton of money for, if you think about the, the uh, comparison to the time that she's going to put in. Um, and there's a lot of, a lot of people that do charcuterie boards. So she's got to be able to differentiate herself um, with, with the types of questions and the experience that she's trying to create. Um, and so how I relate that back to B2B sellers is most software products are in very saturated competitive markets. And so you really need to understand like how you're going to differentiate yourself. Um, And the way that you do that is just like being the better seller. And it doesn't mean that you're better at selling. It means that you're better at understanding what the person on the other end really needs and then creating that experience for them based on what they are actually looking for. Um, and things they may have struggled with in the past. Um, and it sounds like now that I'm speaking about it, it does sound a bit crazy because we're talking about charcuterie, but again, like, you know, she does a ton of, uh, of these, of these deals and for her, it's reoccurring business. So for her to land that initial client is like huge. So she takes a very thoughtful approach, um, because a lot of it's like uh, referral based. So Referral-based reorders. I love that distinction that you just made, dude. That was so critical is going back to, hey, have you ever done this before, right? Or, hey, when you last bought charcuterie, what was that process like? Obviously, extremely relevant to sales, but that's different than the status quo in most cases, right? Like, that's not necessarily status quo, right? Like, status quo is not, hey, I'm getting a charcuterie board every week, right? Like, status quo is just like, hey, we're, you know, like, going about, you know, this is how we go about our normal business. The last time that you did something like this may not necessarily be your status quo. And so you got to really separate those kind of two things of like, hey, this was your previous experience in this space. This is your status quo, right? And this is where you want to go. And you kind of have these three points that you could work off of from there. I uh, I really, really like that a lot. And this has been a, a blast. I learned more about charcuterie in this time than I most undoubtedly ever have. I mean, you and I were both just like coming up with like euphoric kind of discoveries on the spot. I I love episodes like this. Great takeaways for the B2B sellers. We're going to have a lot of really good sound clips in there. I'm excited to pull those out. Why don't you take a moment? I know you're working on a bunch and you're out there and you're making things happen. Why don't you tell us what you're working on? Why don't you plug something with the audience? Yeah, thanks, man. So um, two main things that I'm focused on right now. Number one, is a free resource, which is my newsletter. So I do uh, uh, one edition every Monday, which is essentially my goal is to deliver one actionable prospecting tip in under three minutes that you could start your week with, whether it be email templates, cold call scripts, how you handle objections, right? Uh, the whole the whole nine as it relates to prospecting. And I think the beauty of it is I prospect every day. So um, there are tips from the trenches, if you will. Um, I like to call them Natoli's Nuggets, but uh, that's one thing. Uh, The second is um, 
you know, I think a lot of people are focused on pipeline right now, especially sellers that are, you know, in the midst of this economic downturn, like pipeline is number one. And so uh, my buddy, Tom Malema, who uh, used to work at Gong and I, we created like a cohort style prospecting bootcamp for folks that maybe aren't getting the coaching or the training that they need, but realize that they need pipeline. Um, and so it's like a six week cohort. Um, I can, you know, share the link, but you can find it on my LinkedIn. It's right in my featured section. Um, but basically again, you know, going through six different topics of, you know, prospecting and, uh, not only learning from Tom and I, but, you know, hopefully 50 other people in the community that you can bounce ideas off of. Heck yeah. Go check out the newsletter, go check out the prospecting cohort. And this has been a blast. We all are much more educated on charcuterie and we'll never look at charcuterie the same. If you're in the New York area, check out Mama Natoli's uh, charcuterie business. Maybe we get her an order from this. That would be pretty freaking <laughs> awesome. Um, sales stories in real life, fam. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Catch you all next week. Cheers.